I never know how you define the greatest save uh, because obviously saves are being made throughout the world and um, it would take somebody to video every great save and then analyse them, which, which would be virtually impossible. To me, it was very, very special. Uh, it was an important part of that particular game. We were, we were drawing nil-nil. It was a very even and open game. And, of course, um, had that gone in, one or two of the, our team's heads might have gone down. But, obviously, it kept the heads up and we, we played tremendously well that day and were, were very, very unfortunate to lose. I had to actually get into the centre of the goal from the cross but I couldn't anticipate because if a goalkeeper anticipates, as we, we do see them uh, do from free kicks today, the weight of his body goes on one side. If it goes the opposite side, he can't. He has got no takeoff point. Uh, so I just had to position myself uh, evenly balanced and then wait to see which direction Pelly was going to head it. Once he'd headed it, uh, then I knew it was going in the goal and it was going off his head very very quickly. Mm. So my first reaction was I've got to get across and leap across the goal as quickly as possible but at the same time and here's where the most difficult part was I had to anticipate how high the ball would bounce from the hard surface mm. when I'd actually got to the ball I saw it going up towards the top corner of the net and I actually thought it was a goal because now I'm breaking my fall on the hard surface yeah. and when I saw the ball land behind the goal I realised I'd made the save what did Pelé say? He congratulated you, I think. Didn't well, he? He, no, he didn't. He didn't congratulate. He shouted "Goal" when he headed it, <laughs> because he thought it was a, a certain goal. Um, but Tossau came over and sort of um, just roughed my hair for a second while I was on the floor, you know, mm. which was nice. That's obviously the, perhaps the most famous moment, apart from lifting the trophy itself. But how did how did you actually start in football? When did you first decide you wanted to be a goalkeeper? It's quite amazing, actually, Martin. I uh, I played it. I played for the for the school team. Uh, and was uh, quite successful there and then played for actually the Sheffield Boys 11 but only for three games uh, mm. we played a cup game which we lost I think 3-1 or something I can't remember who to and the manager dropped me and so my school leaving age was 15 my father said to me well had you been playing for the the, uh, the Sheffield Boys team I would have allowed you to stay on school until the summer mm. but with with me not being in it just sitting on the bench he said well I, I, we can't have that because we need you to get out working for, for, for some money for the family uh, so I left school and um, after I think four months I was working on a building site and uh, I was I rushed home ready and always got some overtime on Saturday morning rushed home <laughs> Uh, to get washed and changed to go and watch either Sheffield United or Sheffield Wednesday, whichever one, one, one was always at home. So I got, and when I got home, I knew I hadn't got time to get there. So I went on the local recreation ground uh, where I used to kick a ball to that young boy, and I'm leaning against the fence. There's about four or five of this team warming up before the game. One walked over to me, he said, You used to play in gold in at school. I said, Yeah, that's right. He said, Do you want a game? He says, Our goal is not turned up. And that's when I ran home and uh, got, got, got myself some. Uh, football socks, no shorts, put the working trousers on, I mm. uh, got some boots, they lent me the green shirt and, and I started playing for them until I got asked for a trial. So if you'd had time to get to Bramall Lane or Hillsborough on that day, you might never have played for England. Gordon Banks might never have played for England. It's incredible, right. isn't it? What about uh, professionally then? Where, where were your first contracts? My first contract was at Chesterfield, they'd asked me to go for a trial for the youth team, the under 18 team. I was only 16 at the time, uh, I signed amateur forms for them played for the youth team and then I got into the A team when I was still when I was 16 and then at 17 got into the Central Leagues out which is a reserves very very good league then uh, there was only ourselves and Barnsley out of the lower lower divisions and that was only because uh, one of the chairmen was on the FA committee that we were able to play in this league and it was an we we're playing all of course we were playing all the big clubs like Manchester United and mm. you, you, you know all the big northern clubs but I was still an amateur and then I signed on a part-time professional form, and just got a pound a week. And then I did my national service at 18, came out at 20, signed on full-time, uh, which earned me £17 a week. And then that first season as a full-timer, Leicester City came uh, after 20 games, and uh, I, I signed for Leicester for £7,000. What did you know about Leicester before you came? Not a lot, actually. I knew that they played in the first division, and as far as I was concerned... Um, to sign for a first division club in, in those days was a, uh, a wonderful feeling, you know, it, it, you just felt that, you know, something was happening to you. Do you remember your first appearance for Leicester? I do, yeah, we played Blackpool um, at Filbert Street, we drew 2-2. Two -two. 
and of course I'm playing against all my heroes that, that, mm. that I'd, I'd only seen on television uh, George Farm was playing in goal and uh, your Mortensen all these all these all these great players were were, were, were in the Blackpool side and uh, I mean I'm, I'm still only 20 years of age and uh, so for me, it was a great, great thrill. Yeah. Who was your hero then? Because you, you mentioned some of the um, the players there, but in goalkeeping terms, who were, who were your heroes? Well, I, I had uh, I had uh, two 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 uh, heroes. I had Bert Troutman, who mm. who, who played for Manchester City, uh, prisoner of war, German prisoner of war, and a great, great goalkeeper. He was my latter my latter hero. My first hero was a goalkeeper called Bert Williams that mm. played for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Was it a happy time for you at Filbert Street? Do you remember any memorable games? Oh yeah, I was I was very very fortunate to to come here at a time when uh, Matt Gillis was just uh, buying some new players for the club. People like Frank McClintock were coming in, and, mm. and, and your Ian Kings and your Howard Rileys and your Kenny Leakes and 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 and. and these were super players, and uh, we we then formulated a good side to go on to start playing in cup finals. Unfortunately, the FA ones we lost. The second one to me was was the biggest disappointment. The first one was against Spurs um, when uh, they had a uh, they they did the double that year, but we were the only team that had beaten them at home and away. We'd had the double over them in the league, but we didn't. We were the underdogs, and we didn't really. Uh, it was the first time we'd been there as a team. We didn't say we were going to lose it, but we thought it was going to be difficult for us because they had a lot of internationals in the side, mm. uh, like your Mackays and your Blanche Flowers and uh, Bobby Smith was playing for them and Dyson for Wales. Got a lot of play Brown for Scotland. A lot, a lot of play, international players. Uh, and we put up a, a, a very, very good show. Uh, Len Chalmers got injured. He was hobbling. And we just we just lost. We lost 2-0, uh, two, two I think. 2-1 or 2-0, I think it was. But the second one against Man United, mm. we'd had a super season and we'd done well in the league and we were about fourth top in the league and they'd been struggling for points and we thought, wow, this this was only two years after and we thought, hey, you know, we, we, we could stand a good chance here if we can get our act together. But for some reason, I don't know what it was, Martin, on the day we just did not play to our potential. We, we didn't mark well enough. I myself was very disappointed in my uh, performance and all in all, um, to me, it was a, a double blow walking off the second time with the loser's medal. I really did want to bring that cup back to Leicester, you know. Now, we know, of course, that Gordon Banks moved from Leicester City to Stoke City. But I wonder how many people know that he could have signed for Liverpool. He told me the story that Roger Hunt said, don't sign for anybody. Bill Shankly wants you to come to Anfield. In fact, Gordon later told me, that Bill Shankly, when he couldn't sign Gordon, almost resigned. It was at a dinner in Manchester. It was about two years before he died. He, he retired and he said that he nearly resigned. He said because he went to the board and he said to the board, look, I want one more player and my jigsaw's complete. I want to sign Gordon Banks. Mm. And the board said, oh, I'm sorry, Bill, but we've had all the money that, that, that we can let you have. We can't let you have any more. Mm. So he says, I went to meet my office, he says, and I wrote out my resignation. He says, I put it in an envelope, put it in the top drawer of my desk, and he says, I was going to give him it the next morning. He says, but I got home and I thought, hey, it's not a bad side, really. <laughs> <laughs> Leading us on to 1966 then, probably the proudest moment for you at Wembley in what has been described as a, a classic game, but the tournament itself was a major success, the whole thing, wasn't it? Oh, it was, yeah. I mean, the first time it had been actually taking place here in England, so all the fans could actually get right involved in it. They could see all the games being played at different venues, and uh, it, it was a, it was a big success all round. We had a, I mean all the souvenirs and things were quickly gobbled up. I mean I went I went to get some for my son. We, after the we played Uruguay on the first day and had seen all the I didn't know we didn't know about all these concession stalls outside. Uh, so as the bus rolled up, I could see all these uh, banners and flags and things, and I thought, well, I'll get some of these from my son. So the next game, obviously, we weren't playing. We were just going to watch it, so we'd roll up in there. And we went down, went down, and I walked in. I, I got, got, came to the store with all these pennants, and I said, I want one pennant from every... Oh, he says, I'm sorry, Gordon. He says, but... He says, we, we, there's about three or four, they've all been sold out. Mm. I thought, crikey, it's only, it's only <laughs> the second game. Uh, but yeah, we, 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 it was a success for us, obviously. We didn't know how we were going to perform in it. We'd prepared well. The club had had uh, some super successes away from home. And um, 
here we were now uh, starting the thing against Uruguay and we went on as I said we didn't know how we were going to do uh, we were going to do our best and, and, and hope for the best and uh, we, we, we won it I mean it was a wonderful feeling considering when I look back on my career that I was I was asked to play for this team because the goalkeeper hadn't turned up and here I was now putting <laughs> my hand out for a World Cup winners medal Quite a few people thought Jimmy Greaves should be there rather than Jeff Hurst I think Yes, that, that's very true. Uh, we had a lot of Jimmy Grease fans in this country at the time, and Jimmy was a, a great, great player, especially when you realise what the man, uh, the manager had to do at that particular time. He had to make a crucial decision of who he wanted to play uh, up front, and he pumped for Roger Hunt and Jeff Hurst. Some of the great players you've mentioned already, but there are probably some of the best England players of all time in that team. That's very, very true. Um, they were great players. I mean, Ray Wilson, the left full-back, mm. He was a world-class player and he never got that credit. And I, I'm not saying it because I played with him, but because I'd seen him play against all the best wingers in the world. Not all of them, that's exaggerated, but a lot of the great, like Garincha, who, who sent players all over the place. And little Ray was so quick. Uh, he, used to, he used to be like a little terrier at the feet and they could never, they very rarely got past. The only one man I saw give him a run around was a man called Chislenko that played for Russia mm. and they actually we were 2 nil up against Russia in the middle of winter it was I never forget it Wembley and this guy ran Ray ragged and he actually scored two goals as well on this particular night to, mm. to level the score we drew 2-2 with Russia and um, people like Bobby Moore God bless him a great great player and as you say uh, little players like like Borley like Martin Peters mm. Super players. A word for Nobby Styles as well, the toothless wonder in midfield. Ha <laughs> ha, little Nobby, yeah. yeah. Or a character. <laughs> he was a character, but many people wouldn't have put him in the team, of course, would they? No, he, he, Nobby was the tiger of, of, of the midfield. He, he had to win it for Alf, uh, and, and that's what he did. And Alf could also put him on man, man-to-man marking, and he would put some of the greatest midfield players out of the game. Not necessarily... I mean, he's going hard, he's going hard, but everybody, you know, the foreigners used to think, oh, he's, he's dirty. He wasn't always He wasn't always dirty. He's going hard and, 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 and fair, you know, lots and lots of times. But, of course, he got criticised just for that, you know. How much do you remember about climbing the steps at Wembley for the trophy? Not a great deal, actually. I think my, cl- my, my head was in the clouds at the time. Uh, it felt a great relief, to be honest with you, when it was all over. Um, I felt the same as Big Jack. Big Jack has said the same thing. With all the, the pressures mounting after each game, uh, we had, of course, the press and television at every training session at the hotels, at the, at the ground. We knew it was all... We knew all the, the home people were, were rooting for us and, and that, every time we got one step further, it, it added that little bit more pressure for us to go on and get that... That further still. So when it was when the final whistle went, oh dear! You when you went, oh God! Thank God it's, we've we've done it and it's it's all. But going up to 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 receive the medal was a a great thrill for all of us. And I think to be honest, we we thought we represented all the people that had backed us. <laughs> 